Hello from the English countryside. England is not a gentle utopia, but sometimes it is possible and necessary to see it that way. Now, last time I talked about the effects of the coronavirus recession on uh, the world economies. And this time I want to talk about the effects of uh, 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 that recession upon the finances of Western governments. Now it's even worse than it was uh, last time, a few days ago, with the last video I did. Uh, now, over the last four weeks, the, uh, 22 million Americans have registered as unemployed. And the oil price, <laughs> as for that, that has gone down. That is a long way below $10. Uh, a few days ago, if you wanted to buy a barrel of oil to be delivered in May, that May contract of oil was minus $40 a barrel. That's right. So if you uh, took delivery of a barrel of oil, you also got paid $40. The reason for that is there is nowhere to store the oil. There's nowhere to store the oil because all the places to store the oil are, are already storing the oil because then the oil is not getting used. And the reason the oil is not getting used is because the economies are shut down. It is that bad. It is a little better now. It will probably get, a, get worse again for June. Now, my case is that uh, the state systems will collapse eventually. The state finances will collapse. That will cause the collapse of the welfare states and the angry populations will then uh, cause the collapse of the state system. So collapse of state finances, collapse of the welfare states, then collapse of the state systems. And that's what I want to go through now. My case has been that that, was, that is unavoidable for two reasons. The first reason is the breakdown in debts, the debt bubble. And the second reason is because of the, uh, the harmful effects, the belligerent effects, or the harmful effects of mass immigration, particularly the belligerent effects of Islamic immigration, that either that or the debt burden would bring down the state system. I've always thought it would be the, the, the debt burden that would bring down the state system, and recent events with the coronavirus recession uh, seem to be bearing out that view. What's happening is that businesses and business debts are collapsing and government has to come in to step in to bail them out. Government can't afford to borrow that money to hand it over, so government is just printing it and handing it over because it doesn't want those businesses to, 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 to go under. If they do, their debts will go under and then you'll have another financial crisis. The banks will go down and then you really do get chaos. Then what will happen is governments will not have any money and the welfare states will go down. So governments are stepping in and bailing out businesses uh, with loans or promising to pay off the, the pay the wages of laid off employees. The thing is uh, ordinary workers, voters don't like that so governments are also promising to, to uh, hand over money to individual citizens and families. In America it's roughly three thousand dollars to a family if you qualify. Now it's not easy digging out the figures to show what's, uh, how, how big these government debts are. Mainstream popular media outlets aren't focusing on it at all. The BBC is not focusing on it. It's almost as if the BBC finds this too uncomfortable to handle. They can't handle it and they're not going to. So you have to, you have to dig into the financial press. I've gone to an article in Reuters and I'll bring this article up here. What it is saying is that for America, the Federal Reserve has cut interest rates to zero and promised uh, to pay mortgages and financial policies and businesses and families to the tune of $5.2 trillion. And most of that, only, only $700 billion of that, is in the form of QE. Uh, and it's sim most of it is simple printing and spending because there's no corresponding asset. Somebody has a debt, you don't want that person or that business to go down, you print the money and hand it over to them to plug that debt. And, and what the effect that that is having is this effect on the Fed's weekly balance sheet. Now this, if you look at this, now that shows, the, the, the line bumping along the bottom, that shows how much the, the, the Federal Reserve, how much debt the Federal Reserve is taking on itself week by week. And you see that big line at the right hand side? That's how much it has shut up in recent weeks. Now if you want to look at the cumulative total, you can see it here again. This is the cumulative total. You see how, um, how steep the line is right up on the right hand side? That is rising fast. In Europe, 
The ECB has promised to spend 3.2 trillion euros and most of this is in the form of bailouts to government and businesses. On top of this, Germany will spend three quarters of a trillion euros and France has offered 350 billion euros in bailouts and loans and Spain will spend about 200 billion. Now the, Euro the, the UK has a variety of plans including 330 billion in business loans, a VAT holiday and an offer to pay 80% of the wage bills of laid off employees. The Bank of England has also given itself the power to uh, uh, print money and hand it straight over to government. This is not quantitative easing, there's no corresponding asset. It's printing money, the government's got a debt, the government needs money, the Bank of England can print it and hand it straight over to government. That is not good for confidence in government, in confidence in government finances. Governments will keep printing this money because they have to. They don't have a choice. They can either let the system collapse, in which case the welfare states will collapse, and people will riot and those governments will be deposed. They don't want that. They can't afford to take on straightforward debts because those debts will collapse their economies. So they have to print and spend. But this will eventually lead to the collapse of those state systems. And the question is, when does that happen? Well, the lesson from history is clear. The lesson from the collapse of the Soviet Union and from the, uh, 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 the military coups that took place in Latin American countries in the 1980s and also from the inflations and hyperinflations in Central, Central and Eastern Europe during the middle of the 20th century. The lesson is clear from those cases. If you look at those cases, what they say time and again is that when the annual deficit, that's the government's credit card debt for that year, when that reaches 20% of GDP, i.e. 20% of the total income for that country, that is when society becomes ungovernable. That's when society breaks down. Something seems to happen at that point. It seems to be that um, everyone changes their mind and suddenly the window cleaner will not, uh, will not clean the government office's windows without cash in hand. He will not do it on credit because he will cease to trust government to pay the bills. And then government is living hand to mouth. It can't afford to pay for anything very much apart from its own survival. It can't afford to pay out welfare. It probably can't afford to pay for healthcare systems. It can barely afford to pay for police and, and the army and its own, its own existence. And at that point, you get riots. At that point, you get the collapse of the system. I think we would have reached that point if governments weren't simply printing and spending. If they were taking on debts and giving out the money, they would already have exceeded that 20% threshold for the year. They can't take on these vast sums as debts. They have to print it out. But if they keep doing that, they will break their own system. I think it'll be about two or three years before we see any really serious financial crisis, two to three years. In that respect, I don't think the coronavirus is the crisis. I think this coronavirus is the foreshock to the crisis. But what is unprecedented, what is historically unique about this situation, about the coming crisis, is this element of dependence upon the state to provide, dependence on welfare state, the welfare state dependence on um, state healthcare systems, the NHS, dependence for all kinds of things, care of the elderly, um, housing, uh, roads, um, and everything we, we depend on the state to provide. And our belief that the state can and should take care of us is unique in history. When we find that that is not the case, when that belief is betrayed, that is when there will be a lot of disorder, a lot of rioting, and governments will go down, governments will break down. I want to deal with that.